The Center for Quantum Science and Engineering at UCLA consists of a diverse group of scientists who are interested in collaborating in research projects that will tackle the most challenging problems in the quantum science and technology area. We sit at the heart of one of the most dynamic cities in the world and in an area where the local industry could very well dominate the quantum technology landscape for years to come. Solid state qubits are a very important area here at UCLA and we're very strong in that particular area. Kang Wang and his laboratory, for example, is investigating topological materials and the application of topological materials to making topological qubits. My research expertise is in scientific computing and I work with others on the problems, what I would consider to be the practical aspects of quantum science. And in particular, I create and develop the simulations that are used by those researchers who are actually designing and fabricating quantum devices. My name is Clarissa Yellow. I'm an assistant professor of electrical engineering here at UCLA. Part of our research has to do with the study of spins in biological systems. I believe that with the right type of machine, one can control uh, biological spins in the same way that one can control uh, spins inside crystals. And if that's so, one can think about in the very far future, try to start influencing physiological processes via those uh, spin degrees of freedom that exist at room temperature and inside the wet, hot conditions of a cell. The California Nanosystems Institute is a research institute on the UCLA campus that is obviously focused on nanotechnology. They have world-class capabilities that our center expects to be able to take great advantage of. The California Nanosystems Institute is the ideal partners to help me uh, try to, to start tweaking physiological responses in biological systems via uh, the, the spin degrees of freedom of my expertise. I'm Wes Campbell. I'm uh, a physicist at UCLA. We are down in a lab that works on quantum computing using lasers and trapped atomic ions. What we're trying to do here is to replace the hardware that people use in more conventional approaches to quantum computing by developing a new qubit. So each of these glowing white dots on the screen here is an individual atom of barium. And the reason we can see them is because we have them glowing in the dark by shining lasers at them. And they're very far from anything else because they're levitated in the middle of a vacuum chamber. These are the qubits inside our quantum computer. Yeah, this project is a really good example of the way that an organization like the Center for Quantum Science and Engineering can help us to work together to find ways to do things uh, that are more than the sum of the parts. Uh, so this is actually a collaborative experiment uh, with another uh, one of my colleagues, Eric Hudson, who's also a physicist here at UCLA. And I don't think either one of us would have been able to do this on our own. Photonic qubits allow you a way to do secure communications in large data scale warehouses and also long distances. There are some challenges in photonic qubits. Uh, the first one being we want to pack a lot of information in a photon. Second is how do we transmit over long distances and how do we do it effectively, efficiently uh, in a single photon environment. Being here at UCLA uh, allows us much more capabilities than I anticipated before I even came here. Particularly, for example, there's a very large industry component to, to Los Angeles that we're able to work with. Interest in quantum science and technology has just exploded over the last several years. There are now major efforts at big companies like Microsoft and IBM and Google. There are efforts at smaller companies like HRL Laboratories, IonQ, Rigetti. So the landscape has changed dramatically and along with that change in the landscape has been a need for people to enter the workforce in this area. My name is Katherine Erickson and I work for HRL Laboratories. HRL Labs is only one of a rising number of companies interested in targeting quantum technology for future applications in computing, sensing, and communications. It's amazing to me how much the interest in quantum, especially in Southern California, has grown over the last five years that I've been at HRL. The university provides workforce training uh, as, as a major part of its mission. And in, in quantum, we have been we have been waiting a little bit to see what the need is and now we can see the industry need is picking up and that it's growing fast. And so we are saying this is the time where we need to start a master's degree 
so we can fill the need, particularly here in Los Angeles. California is, is obviously a hub for this sort of uh, investigation, and I feel that either, either route I want to take, both academic or industrial, I'm going to have opportunities in, in my vicinity here, um, both during uh, graduate school and afterwards. I taught the first class on quantum computing at UCLA last year, and it was an amazing experience. When it's the first class of anything, there's a pent up demand and I got 60 students. I gave more homework than I ever did in a class because I really wanted them to learn and they did it. And uh, Amazon uh, started a quantum computing uh, operation and they hired one of my students as one of the founding members of the group.